Echo is unlike any stealth game I've ever played. In a gaming genre that has embraced cardboard boxes, trifocal goggles, and water arrows, Echo stands apart by being a stylish science fiction take on the genre, placing you in a beautiful but deadly world with dangers dictated by your own actions. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people have heard of this game, which is a shame, because I think it's one of the true hidden gems of this generation and something stealth gamers shouldn't miss. Developed by Ultra Ultra and released in 2017, Echo puts you in the suit of N, a woman who should probably stay out of the sunlight. I feel like shit. N has traveled to a mysterious planet on a mission to resurrect an important figure from her past, only to find that the world is entirely made up of one big, incredibly luxurious palace. The only problem is this aesthetically pleasing world has taken the liberty of creating hordes of clones based on N, who are trying to hunt her down and kill her. To make matters worse, they are learning from N's actions, improving their skills based on what N does in any given scenario. Here's how it works. When the lights are on, the palace is reading all of your moves. Anything you do, whether it be vaulting over a ledge or shooting your pistol, the palace is recording and learning from you, represented by these specters the player leaves behind. After a certain amount of time, the lights will go off, and eventually the palace will reset. When the lights come back on, you will discover the clones are now able to execute all of the actions the player did before. So, if you vaulted over a ledge, they can do it too. If you choke out one of the clones, they will be able to choke you out. And of course, if you shot one, they will be able to shoot you. The AI learns from the player, making this a game that is essentially only as difficult as how well you play. They learn from me. I'm certain of it. They can't cross the water, but after I've done it and a blackout has evolved them, they do it without hesitation. It's not all doom and gloom though. Fortunately, the clones are only able to do whatever the palace recorded you doing in the last cycle. Once the next cycle starts, they forget anything you didn't do. So for example, in the last cycle, the clones have learned how to fire their weapons. But if you abstain from shooting anybody in the current cycle, they will not be able to do it in the next. Make sense? Also, when the palace goes dark before a reset, it ceases recording your actions. So anything you don't wanna do in the light for fear of the clones learning it, you'll be able to do in the dark. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, can I just wait out the light cycle and exclusively do everything in the dark? And the answer to that is a hard no. While it's not explicitly stated in the game, the light cycle will only trigger after the player does a certain amount of actions, which as far as I can tell, is random with every level. So where the strategy comes into play is deciding which actions make more sense for the clones to know in the next cycle so you can survive the room. Maybe the clones being able to open doors or jump down ledges is a better alternative to them knowing how to activate elevators or cross bodies of water. Believe me, playing this you will find it's far better to limit the clone's mobility rather than their lethality. This gameplay loop works really well and keeps you on your toes in a very different way compared to other stealth games. In games like Splinter Cell or Metal Gear where Sam or Snake's moves are pulled off without any second thought, here in Echo everything must be thought through carefully. Plus, where other stealth games put a lot of effort into making the AI as believable as possible, Echo relieves itself of this burden since the player is well aware they are the deciding factor in how ruthless the AI can be. And frankly, a lot of the fun is figuring out how to take advantage of this. Within the large, contrast-heavy halls of this world, you will alternate between two different objectives of progression. The first is stealing two heavily guarded golden scepters to activate a giant door into the next area. The second is collecting numerous blue orbs in order to activate an elevator that will take you deeper into the planet. Despite numerous options and pathways for completion, these areas are typically the most difficult, especially if you are a bit too liberal with your actions. Now, it may seem like the game is a little shallow in offering only two real objectives, but fortunately the challenge of the game, much like the clones, evolves as you go along, offering more stealth mechanics to contend with, as well as more complicated and elaborate level design, making for a game that seldom gets boring. Fortunately, the game also offers a pretty intriguing story for the players to digest, fueled by the bickering and often hostile relationship between the main character and her AI companion. The sphere just turned off. That means the echoes are not coming, right? You sound like naming them explains everything. To me, the logic of it all only makes the whole thing more absurd. 
Their often lengthy arguments shed quite a bit of light on this bleak future, and I'd be lying if I didn't say I was curious what other worlds or stories could be presented in this universe. The only downside is the ending is kind of odd, mostly confusing, and pretty abrupt. But don't let this deter you from playing. The ride is certainly worth the price of admission, as well as the alluring aesthetics. If you've made it this far into the video, it's become pretty obvious that Echo has a very unique visual presentation. A game painted in thick contrast of blacks and whites, shadowed with light blues and greens, punctuated with the occasional tone of red. Featuring intricate levels with a daunting amount of symmetry and luxury that feels both man-made and alien all at once. It may not be a look that's for everyone, but it sure as hell is made for me. I think this game looks absolutely stunning, something that represents the type of style I enjoy in all forms of media. Plus, as a cherry topper, the game has this awesome interactive soundtrack where the score reflects the changing light cycle as well as the enemy's alertness. It's really cool. This also goes along with strong voice performances from both of the game's main characters. You are definitely disposed to find meaning where there is none. As you say, it's in your genes. If there was a weakness, I would say the animation could be stronger in the character models, because at times it does come across a bit stiff and clunky, something that is at odds with the silky smoothness of the world. Otherwise, the game does a brilliant job of making my mouth drop and my PlayStation's fan kick into high gear. In fact, this is a good time to jump into the main issue I had with the game as a whole, its performance. Echo just doesn't run very well, at least on the PlayStation 4. Numerous times I found the game's frame rate to be substandard, and the game was hitching and halting constantly. In fact, the game outright crashed the first time I started it up. I have to say, this is an Unreal 4 engine game playing on my PlayStation 4 Pro. There is no reason this game should be running so badly. I mean, holy cow, as soon as I pointed my camera towards some of the more geographically intense areas, my poor PlayStation's fan went into jet engine mode. Now, to be fair, I probably just need to get my system cleaned out because this is more a sign of dust contamination. But I mean, come on, whose PlayStation isn't dust contaminated? But either way, fair warning, if you play this game, it's gonna put your PlayStation through its paces. It's a shame Echo isn't more widely known because so much about it is unlike anything I've ever seen in a stealth action game or even in science fiction for that matter. There's some very fresh gameplay concepts here that legitimately add some new challenge to the genre, especially considering its unique AI. Its performance may be woeful, but I think if you're a stealth fan looking for something fresh and new, or is someone that likes their sci-fi pale and with a lot of black, then maybe Echo has something to offer you. In fact, with the closing of this current console generation, I wouldn't be surprised if this title ended up on a few hidden gems lists. Just be sure to keep your PlayStation in a well-ventilated spot if you decide to play it. But that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and also click the like button. I post gaming content weekly and have numerous reviews in the pipeline. Also, please shoot me some comments. Has anybody else played this game? What are your thoughts on it? Are there any other hidden gems you'd like to see me cover on this channel? Be sure to let me know. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this review of Echo.